Hello, child of God. Remember how Balaam's donkey saved Balaam from the death angel? Almighty God calls Balaam's donkey to talk. Balaam had a real conversation with his donkey, but he refused to accept the warning. The sign of the donkey talking should have been enough to change Balaam's plans, but Balaam circumvented God's instruction and aided the enemy. Balaam was a prophet of God, but he still did not listen and repent. The donkey speaking like a prophet of God was a sign to Balaam that he ignored. Almighty God uses unusual prophets to speak to his people, whom just do not listen and repent. I would like to introduce a fulfilled prophecy that has been intentionally ignored by Zion worldwide and a large portion of the Christian church today. The prophecy is written in Isaiah chapter 28 verses 11 and 12. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. The original fulfillment of this prophetic sign was when Israel was overrun by the Assyrians during the 720s BC. Unbelieving and unrepentant Israel was overrun, conquered, and humiliated by an army speaking a foreign language. Almighty God used the Assyrians as unusual prophets to speak to his people whom still did not listen and repent. Generation after generation, the manifested sign of speaking to the Jews in a foreign language that they cannot understand is still a sign that Almighty God is calling the Jews into repentance, but they still would not listen. The Apostle Paul explains several general things about the gift of speaking another tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. So let's take a look at the manifestation of this prophecy, a sign to unbelievers on a global scale. Just as the Zionist revival began in the 1800s, so did the occasional Christian revival with manifestation of tongues. Then, in the early 1900s, the Zionist revival went worldwide, and so did the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the manifestation of tongues. By 1948, when Zion gave birth to Israel as a fulfillment of prophecy, the Pentecostal revival was in all nations. Looking further into the manifestation of this prophecy, on the earth today there are roughly 13,746,000 or so Jews. And on the earth today there are roughly 478 million, almost a half a billion, tongues-talking Christians. Almighty God is still using unusual prophets and speaking to his people, Zion, in an unknown tongue. And they still will not believe. But there is a deeper revelation about this gift. The Holy Spirit is speaking to the blood-washed church on earth in an unknown tongue as a sign for the church to repent and return back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me cook it down for you with me as an example. I am a washed in the blood of Jesus, born again, spirit-filled man with the knowledge about grace and mercy of God. I am also a man of the flesh. Like the Apostle Paul said, the things I want to do, I do not do. And what I do not want to do, that's exactly what I do. I have to resist my sin-filled desires like anybody else. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. When I pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit speaks to me, but it's a language I do not know or understand. Does that sound familiar to you? The Holy Spirit is speaking to me, and I will not hear and repent because of my unbelief. But at the same time, the Holy Spirit is making intercession for me, just as Jesus made intercession for me and the rest of the whole world on the cross. As the Holy Spirit is giving me those words I don't understand to pray, he can see Jesus on the cross and he can see the blood on the altar. This is why Paul says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. 
He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Child of God, when I'm in my prayer closet, I'm not subject to the Apostle Paul's rules for the church that everything should be done decently in order. I'm praying in tongues without an interpreter, and I don't care. I need for the Holy Spirit to make intercession for me. My doubt and unbelief clouds my faith when I pray in my understanding. Yes, I pray and sing in my understanding, but my confidence is in praying and singing in tongues. And the same goes when the Holy Spirit gives this donkey the words to speak. It is the Holy Spirit's faith and love that the Father sees. That's right, child of God. Tongues talking Christians are unusual prophets. To the unbelieving world and the unbelieving church, the roughly one half billion tongues talking Christians are a bunch of religious fools obsessed with some kind of emotional hysteria making up babbling words in order to appear more spiritual. The unbelieving intellectual church opposes all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Teaching tongues have ceased when that that was perfect came. Tell me, did Jesus already come? The Holy Spirit is not welcome in their churches. Speaking in tongues is offensive to the intellectuals and, of course, to Satan himself. But remember what Almighty God said. He sent the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And listen to what the Lord Jesus Christ said. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. That child of God, the speaking in tongues is a sign to the unbelieving world to repent, the unbelieving Jews to repent, and most of all the unbelieving church to repent, including tongues-talking Christians. My friend, many of the end-time prophecies are being fulfilled. Since Israel became a nation in one day as fulfillment of prophecy, May the 14th, 1948, these are the very times that the Lord Jesus Christ warned us about. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. The instructions the Lord Jesus Christ gave us is that we should pray that we are able to stand before the Son of Man. My friend, no one is able to stand before the Son of Man unless he is washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are none righteous, no, not one. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let us pray now together and ask Almighty God to forgive our sin and wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just follow after me in prayer, but pray with your own faith and your own sincerity. Father God, that's right, just pray in faith after me. Father God, I ask you now to forgive all of my sin and wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and make me holy unto you. Baptize me now in the Holy Spirit and give me more power to resist temptations. I acknowledge that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for my sin and is soon to return. 
I forgive all of those people that I have resented or hated, and I receive from you the free gift of salvation. I dedicate my life and commit my spirit to you. I ask you now to keep me strong in the time of testing and help me to stand before the Son of Man. I receive that as done. Amen.